All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're gonna do a fig review, but to be honest with you, we have a really important lesson that I'd like to teach you guys today. Because we have a fig here, it's called the Daloso, that we've talked a lot about in the past. And I wanna do a review on it because it's been so different this year. Because I've planted it in the ground, because I've always grown and, and always talked about this fig from the viewpoint of growing it in a container. But ever since I put it in the ground and ever since it's been now, you know, quite established in the ground, the fruits have changed quite significantly. Uh, and it's been really impressive um, and an eye-opening experience that I hope in this video you guys will sort of um, understand and, you know, come to learn that this is also the case with your trees. Um, you know, it's amazing, I think, that we dedicate all this time to growing them in pots and just some of the trees maybe across the board, all of them really change um, to different degrees. I would say all of them really do change to different degrees when you plant them in the ground. Um, and particularly, you can really see that, especially on this fruit that I've noticed, is usually in the length of the neck or the length of the stem. Um, they can also be larger fruits or consistently larger fruits. Um, it seems like just here in my yard that the trees have more energy. The root systems are obviously larger and uh, it just seems to be better uh, in general for having that right angle to the fruits. And what I mean is when the, the fruits are ripening, they're ripening at the right angle because if the eyes quite frequently are pointed to the sky, well then if it rains, the, the rain's going to hit the eye and that's the most sensitive part of the fruit and you'll end up seeing a lot of splitting because absorption will happen at that location and because it is already so sensitive, that absorption makes the fruit expand very quickly and then you see the splitting. And then when you see the splitting, of course, we all know the fruit quality diminishes and drops and it's just not, it's not great. So what I've noticed with this fruit particularly is that again, the, the shape, the size, so much of the characteristics have changed. Um, I've been extremely impressed with this Daloso. And I'm hoping when I cut this open, because I did this pretty much the same video um, a couple days ago, because we really have been ripening a lot of fruits on the streets. Again, it's been really impressive in many different regards. But when I did this, you know, the, the first time around, uh, the tree actually, the fruits I picked weren't ready, oddly enough. So this one seems very ready and it seems like now the trick is that I can't let a lot of the fruits ripen as long as I normally do. We have so many fruit flies this year and I haven't been able to keep up with it and they end up actually uh, messing with the fruits. But this one looks pretty good, at least from the outside. And here you can kind of see, you know, the, that length of the stem that I was talking about and the, and the neck. It's just uh, really significant if you ask me to the point where it totally changed the fruit, um, you know, in the neck and the stem particularly, but now I see this fruit in a much different way. Now that I know it has this elongated shape, now I know it has this long neck, the long stem, especially when planted in the ground, I know that it is one of the better fruits for my climate. And whereas before I would have said, you know, this fig is really a keeper, um, I always was impressed with the flavor I've always thought it was quite layered, complex, an interesting flavored fruit, but I never really looked at it like this in terms of a really top performer here. It does actually, um, believe it or not, it does look a little spoiled on the inside, so hopefully that's not the case. The figs have just been kind of weird this year, especially now. I mean, we're pretty much in October, so this anything we get at this point is kind of a bonus. But again, I have looked at this fruit in such a different way this year that I've been really extremely impressed with it. Um, so that's what I want to do with you guys is I want to I want to show I wanted to show you the tree, show you how the, this is so much different than last year, um, and then do a taste review because I'm sure the flavor even is slightly different. Let's try this. Yeah, I mean. It's very good. Um, I don't know if really the flavor has changed all that much. There is a little bit of SWD I can see in here and that it's not 
exactly fermented. It's really just starting to ferment. So I'm pretty much safe at this point, but this other half is probably a lot worse than the, the half I ate. So I don't really, and I can't really say for sure if really the, the flavor has changed too much. I still think it's a great flavored fig, but really with the, the money maker here and why I wanted to talk to you guys about this is because the fruit is just, again, so much better off now that it has this longer shape, has this longer stem. Uh, it, it almost seems like to me it's in a class of one other fig, which is actually the Moro de Caneva. And you guys know how much I love that fruit because it has such a long neck, because of the way it hangs. And it really is for that reason. I mean, the flavor is great on it too, but it's just so impressive in terms of performance. And now I can kind of really consider the Daloso pretty much in that same category as the Moro de Caneva. It'll be interesting to see. Here's more fruits that are ripening. I've ripened actually quite a few off of this tree this year. Um, it finally got its act together in terms of putting out the fruits now that it got the light that it needed. It seems to be a very vigorous grower and if you don't, you're not careful with um, you know, opening up the center of the tree guys, like with all these trees, you just won't get any fruits. So it's really critical to do that I think, especially for this one. but. It did get the light it needed and it, it did fruit. And um, again, I'm really seeing this variety in a very different positive way um, because I planted it in the ground. So very interesting, just across the board, that whole thought process. I don't think a lot of people know about, or there is some people who have been kind of preaching this for years, but it's interesting to kind of see it in action and you know really quantify it too, because some people, you know, they, they'll just say, well, the fruits change when you plant them in the ground, and that's, that's it. That's all they'll say. Or the fruits are better when you plant them in the ground. And I know um, people claim that the fruits taste better, too, when they're planted in the ground. I certainly don't believe that. Um, I think on average that's probably true. But you can really get the best quality piece of fruit by just limiting the water. It doesn't matter if it's in the ground or if it's in a pot. And it's easier to limit that water in a pot. But, you know, for all the reasons mentioned in this video, it's changing the fruits in a way that is making the fruits of this particular variety so, so different than it was in a pot. Um, but again, across the board, I think pretty much all the, the varieties now, guys, they change to some extent. And usually you'll see it in the, the length of the stem, you'll see it in the length of the neck. Um, you know, Campaneria as an example, typically on the, the Campaneria potted tree I have this year, uh, the, the, you know, the necks and the stems weren't typically that long. But when I have them in the ground and I've been really reviewing that fig from the, the viewpoint of an in-ground tree, um, you can see that the stem and the, and the neck is more conducive to have less splitting. But there was a little bit of splitting this year, not a lot, but very a small amount on the potted Campanaria, and you wouldn't probably see that nearly as often because these in-ground trees, and I think this is really, you know, getting to that point, or at least, at least proving my point, that the in-ground trees tend to typically split a lot less. So, uh, you know, that's one reason right there, I think, is just the simple fact that the stems are longer, the necks are longer, they hang the right way, and then also, um, we have to consider the fact that it's in the ground and the root system so large and wide gets itself really dug in. And then you think, well, if that's the case and there's a big rain event, well, it's not going to be nearly as affected by all that water in the soil because it has such a vast and wide root system that it seems probably be less affected than some very small concentration of roots that you would typically see in a container. So. I think that's my, my major thoughts on this. And that's the Daloso guys. I've been, again, you know, impressed with it in other years, but now it's, it's really up a notch. And I, would, I wouldn't say that it's just a keeper anymore. I would say this is among the top tier figs I grow. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited for this going forward. Um, this variety, you know, it's, it's amazing. I think, especially when you've been growing a certain variety for years and you observe it in some way and then all of a sudden something happens and it changes completely and now it's like a totally different fruit. 
that's at least how I feel about it. So we'll see you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching this one. Take care, and we'll catch you for the next future videos on the figs. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.